What's up everybody? Today you're gonna learn how to build your weather application using React. First thing and the most important thing for you is just take it easy, especially if you're a beginner. I'm gonna do my best to teach you, to give you the, 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 the concepts that you need to, to learn in order to start building your first applications using React. If you have questions, uh, roadblocks, doubts, and you want to get some answers, well, just leave them in the section below in the comments. I would like to hear from you what you thought about the video, uh, if it was helpful or not as well. And I'll do my best to answer all of those questions that you have. Well, too much talking. Um, besides that, just once again, just take it easy and let's just get started building our first React application. Uh, but before we get moving forward with developing our React weather application, I'm going to show you the step by step that we're going to follow. We're going to install the Create React app library first. Then we're going to install Node SAS uh, package in order for us to include, to be able to use SAS files. Uh, this is just a different alternative for you to use CSS, but like a little bit with powers, uh, additional powers that you functionality you can use. Also, we're going to start developing our create search bar component. Then we're going to create our weather API using open weather map. Also, we're going to see, uh, we're going to create our current weather component our forecast weather component and at the end we're going to install our application so something that i wanted to show you before we move forward is if you're not very familiarized with the concepts of components well essentially libraries nowadays react angular or or vue.js they, they are based on components and components, one of the main things with components is that it allows you to reuse them across different pages, across different parts of applications where, where you want to use them. In this example, we're talking about the search bar. And this, the search bar that you're seeing in here, it's a component. This current weather app uh, or current weather component is going to be this section here where we're displaying the current weather. And also you're seeing this current uh, or this hourly forecast, which is our forecast weather component. What happens with that is that with the components, as I mentioned before, we can reuse them. So simply by just copying the component and pasting it in anywhere in our application, we simply can already have the same functionality, the same view, the same content of that particular component in just different parts of our application. To make it simpler for you to visualize it a little bit, what a component could be, we're gonna open our developer tools. So essentially these websites are, are based on this HTML uh, syntax, right? And the HTML syntax is gonna contain the head and the body. Now, just to put it into perspective or just to keep it simple, you will see here this section that is called search bar. At the moment of building the, the app, under the hood, React is just compiling and making it look as a just regular HTML syntax. But in reality, what we have just is just a component. You will see here search bar, the current weather, forecast. And if what I was saying is if we could reuse the component over and over. So, for example, you could just copy and paste it. Let me do it again. Copy and paste it anywhere within our application you will see that we have the same component. But this is just a way to kind of like tell you to represent what components are in React or any uh, frameworks nowadays uh, that are used in the UI. We're gonna the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install create React app library. That's gonna allow us to give us a jumpstart with our application is going to help us generate our default structure of uh, react the application in react with all the libraries all the configuration um, the minimum configuration needed for you to run your application so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our terminal in our terminal uh, just make sure you go in the you're located in the folder where you want to generate your application in my case is the repos you can be in the documents folder you can be in your should you in the videos folder whatever you want to be and then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install globally uh, create react app 
That's the first thing we're going to do. Now, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to create our React app. So we're going to run this command. And essentially, it is saying that we're going to create a new React app with the name of my app. I don't want to call it my app. I want to call it weather app react. That's going to be the name. And now what's going to happen is going to generate a project with react with all of the default configuration that we need to just just focus on coding and, and no worry about configuring the whole application scripts and everything that you need to know in order to just run your your app okay perfect finally it completed that process now we're just gonna change to our directory remember we call it weather react or weather app in react now the first thing we're gonna execute is we're just gonna run the project the default project so we can just do npn run start and perfect you will see that our application in react is being loaded there is your your react application now the first thing we're gonna do now is just gonna go to our folder we're gonna open that react where app now we have our folder structure and <clears throat> once we once you open your your, your weather app in react let's go to the app js4 and literally we can just find here what's gonna be what's being displayed right now you can always type something in here this is my first test and as soon as you save it oh, i can like kill the terminal after <laughs> opening this folder so let me just run it the project again one more time and essentially what i want to tell you is react the text changes uh, made on the, in the files literally reloads the page so in this case, now that my project run again, you will see the change that I did. This is my first test. If I add more sections or more lines, another, I can type today, another line code, or not code, just another line. It's gonna save that. And you will notice, notice that those changes were executed. Okay, so you notice that every time we're making change and we save it, the changes were, were, were executed were reloaded by by react and it's just reloading refreshing the page that's just good the first thing that i want to do is just remove this because we don't really need this anymore so we're gonna remove this from this app what, what you're seeing here the app js is is a component it is a functional component if you notice react usually starts with this in order to start react application we're gonna have to have this react dom that render and then uh, we're just essentially call all of the components that we have. And then we're gonna place them on the, the element ID called root that we have defined in an index file. If we go to the public folder, you'll find this index.html file. Once you go there, you will see all of this default configuration in the index.html file. And you will see at some point, you will see this div element containing this ID. And the ID is root. And that's exactly where our React application is gonna dump all of the components, starting with our app component. So if we go back into our folder structure, you will see that uh, in the source on the, the source folder, you will see this index.js file. The index.js file is just generating this document. Uh, this is just rendering the app component. Uh, and it's gonna place it within uh, the index.html file containing element containing the root id that's essentially what's happening in there now one of the things that you will see in react is you i'm going to start talking about components over and over and there are two things two, two different kinds of components in react one of them is a functional component a functional component and then you will see another one which is going to be a, a class component and essentially a functional component returns a template in itself it doesn't have too much configuration it has it doesn't have methods or functions inside the class uh, that is used to manipulate the data uh, to make some to have some logic the internal logic that is gonna make changes on, on what kind of data is being displayed for example within your your component a functional component in itself it just displays or returns a template when i'm talking about template this is just a template just what is being rendered in the ui 
Perfect. Now, since we have that, remember we need for our web application, we need to have a search bar. That's the first thing I want to have. What I'm gonna do is just go to my source folder and I'm gonna generate first my components folder. And inside the components folder, and you can just place your, your, your components anywhere. I just prefer to have this kind of a structure where I say that my components are going to be in the components folder. So I'm going to call this search bar .js. And in here, we're going to have our search bar component, but if we start taking a look at our step-by-step -step process, I kind of skip it already. <laughs> we need to install node SAS first in order for us to use SAS, SAS files. So essentially, we have these CSS files and if we make changes, for example, to this app CSS file, uh, we say I want to change the background to, let's say, to, to black or to, to white. And we refresh the background color changes to white. Now, SAS files essentially are like CSS with powers, with superpowers. It allows you to give a little bit an extra functionality. But anyway, you if you don't want to install it, you, you, you don't have to, but I would recommend you because uh, that's the kind of files I want to use the CSS, the SAS files to style the application. So what we're going to do is we're going to open a new terminal. Uh, don't close. Make sure to not close the terminal where you're running your React application. Uh, you can just open a new terminal. Uh, in this case, I just click on the split button or you can just simply click on the plus button to generate another terminal. And we're going to install our SAS or node SAS folder or package. So we're going to install npm i or npm install, whichever way. And then we're going to tell it that we're going to save it in our package folder or package JSON. That's another thing that I haven't taught. If you don't know, we are brand new to development. In our package JSON, we're going to be able to store scripts. We're going to be able to store our dependencies and our extra configuration that we can have. What are the dependencies? The dependencies are just libraries that our application is depending on. In this case, by default, this React application is depending on these React scripts, React DOM library, this React library, Web Vitals library. It's depending on that. And you can always do an npm install and then install, for example, whatever package you want to install. And it will install it in your npm. But the problem is that it's not going to be a store. It's not going to save, be saved in your dependencies section. So what happens is that if I don't save it in here, and let's say somebody else clones my project, and I want to start to install all of the packages, well, there are some packages that are going to be missing because I just installed them in my local computer, but I didn't store them in my dependencies. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a double dash and then save. Uh, ah, and in reality, I <laughs> this is not the right name. It's going to be node SAS. And you will see in a few seconds that our dependencies are going to be updated with node SAS. There it is. We're seeing node SAS now. We're good there. That, now that we did that, what we're going to do is to quickly test if this works or not, we can just simply change our CSS file, our app.css file to a app.scss. We're going to change it. Uh, let's say we're getting some errors. Ah, another thing that I might be missing here is that our app.js, our component app, it was dependent upon the CSS file, but we renamed this to a CSS file. So now that's what we're going to use. I just refresh. Everything is good. Let's make a change real quick. Let's change the background to, let's say, the red. We save and it gets updated perfectly. Now that step of the process is good to go. Perfect. The next step now is to create the search bar component. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead into the components. And previously I mentioned that you should create a search bar uh, that JS file. In here, we're going to store our component. Now in here, 
we need to import first React in order to generate our class component. It's not going to be a functional component because it's going to have a little bit of more additional setup and you will see in a few seconds. So just stick with me, just be patient. Then when you import packages from the dependencies that you install is using this syntax. In this case, we can say import everything with the asterisk sign, import everything from, and within quotes, you're gonna start typing the name of the package. In this case, is React. Now, you can also assign in the name, and in this case, I'm just gonna assign it to React, which is the common naming convention. Now, it's time to start building our class component. By doing that, we're gonna use our keyword class, and class and then we're gonna start naming our component search bar component and essentially react is already this react is already a component and we're just gonna leverage it we're gonna leverage it by generating a new component with all of the functions that the react component already has uh, so we can use it in our components in this case in our class component in this case what we're gonna do is gonna use the keyword extends and to react that component once we have that we have some default configuration that we can have access to among them we can have the render uh, function that comes with the react component now here in the render function is when we return the template that we want to display in the UI so for example, if I would like to return HTML in the UI, this is where we're gonna place it. And we're gonna place it by doing a return and within parentheses, we're gonna open and close parentheses and inside here, we're just gonna start adding some HTML. So for example, I'm gonna call this div and let's say this is the search bar component. We're gonna save it now the next thing what we're gonna do is we need to export this component so it's accessible for other files generally react you can just export anything by default and in this case by default we're gonna export the search bar class component i'm just gonna type here this is a class component and okay now we are exporting that if we go to our app.js file in our app.js file we can import that search bar and we can do it and just start finding it so we're gonna call it import everything from components and then it's gonna be on the search bar that's the location we're gonna import a search bar component now inside here we can use our search bar component we can do it by doing opening the angle brackets and then we're gonna start typing search bar and then we're just gonna close it with the slash and then our closing bracket perfect we save and you will see that this is my search com bar component is being loaded in my ui what happens if i don't have anything here let's say that i'm just gonna comment this out this whole function containing the render and essentially it's gonna have errors if you start taking a look inspecting the, the browser you're just gonna take a look and it says that the search bar which is a component is telling us that it doesn't have a render method which means that we need to have one in order to be able to render whatever is in the template for that component so make sure you at least have this render method render function and once we have that we're gonna be able to fix that issue and display the information out there it's funny how it works but you cannot have multiple elements like this way like sibling multiple sibling elements within your render uh, function you cannot return that you can just have a main um, main tag element wrapping up all of those tag elements all of the content that you have because if you start doing that uh, it's not gonna like it let's start saving it for example a second diff and let's say if, if it works and it doesn't work as it says here a, a json js elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag so essentially what's telling us is that we just have to have a main parent element wrapping all of the subsequent elements 
uh, in our search bar component or any React component, essentially. Okay, enough of talking. Let's start building our form or our search bar and we're gonna build it here. So first thing, now we're gonna have to have a button in our form. And our button is essentially gonna have, let's just call it search. This is where we're gonna search our cities, the cities weather. And this is gonna type, be a type of button of submit. Not just gonna be a regular button. Also, we're gonna have an input element where we are gonna be able to search. We're gonna open our input element and then we're gonna give it a name, attribute name of search. We're gonna give it also an ID and let's call it search. Now that we have that, we're just good in here. Just gonna save that. Now we have our search button, we have our input, and here we're just essentially look for our cities. Generally, whenever we have components, we would like to render display information, variable information that we have stored in our variables. So for example, this is a variable and we're just gonna create it, uh, a constant variable. Let's say it's gonna be my name. My name, let's type my name save it but then i also would like to be able to display my name or whatever content we have in our variable in that way we're going to use in string interpolation and the way we do um, we're able to display our information of our variables is by opening closing curly braces and then typing the variable name we type it and then you will see now that my name is being displayed. Just gonna remove our names and then first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build our constructor. We're gonna build our constructor and then our constructor, we're just gonna add this sub super value and this should contain props. Props, we're gonna pass it onto our React component. And then we're gonna have something that in React is called the states. The states is where we can store information. And once that information is updated, it triggers this render function, which is which is gonna update this, this template with some information. So for example, just to make it simple, let's just generate this or let's access that state value. You will see it here. And in here, you can define any kind of values in here uh, that you want to store in your state. So let's say I'm going to store my name one more time. Oh, let's let's make it more realistic. It's going to be uh, the location, right? Because we need to find location of where of the weather. So we're going to have our location and in here we're going to have an empty value. And let's say I'm going to have a set interval. Uh, this is just for example purposes. You should not do that, but I'm just going to show you what happens whenever we update the state every time we're gonna update it every second uh, but before updating every second what i want to do is i want to display that formation the location in my template so i'm gonna have very well cool uh, location and this is gonna access the state the state's gonna have this location and let's say i'm gonna display this location in my template we render it's not displaying anything. If we just change the value of my location, it's updating the template and it's displaying. Now, I told you that whenever we update the location, what's gonna happen is that this is gonna get updated. It's gonna re-render again the template. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just generate this simple set interval function. And what happens with set interval is that every second in this case we're going to apply this set interval and essentially what's going to happen is that every amount of time in this case every or every one second we're going to trigger this function this function and in this function i want to update the state but in react you don't update the state but accessing that property value of location and then doing this like for example let's say my new location in react you don't do that this is not going to work at least in order for you to re-render the template. We do this and nothing is happening. The, in theory, this should be executing every second. So let's just test it. Uh, executing interval. And let's see that you're seeing here in my logs that every second 
I'm getting this log. So what's going on here? The location every second has been updated and you told me that once the state gets updated, it triggers the rendering process. Yes, it's true. But how does it trigger it? It triggers by using the set state function. So if we use the set state function, we open parentheses, and then we open curly braces, and then inside here, we're gonna find the location property, and we're gonna assign it a new value. In this case, my new value. We save it, and here now you're seeing that my new value has been displayed in the UI. So make sure that if you want to update or you want to re-render, this process of setting the state needs to happen in order to display some new information in order to trigger this render function. So let's add those comments in here. Render function is triggered whenever setting or updating the state using the set state function now i'm gonna kill this because this is not needed i don't need it anymore now what we're gonna do is i want to use the location and that location property is the one that we're gonna use as the value for our input so our input is gonna have a value of location whatever our location is we save it and we start making changes i'm literally typing in here and i'm not seeing that the changes are being executed why is that happening well remember that the location the state of the location needs to be updated using the set state function so what we have to do is we need to be able to detect any kind of changes that are happening in the input tag element once that happens we need to update update the values that the user is inserting into the input we update this location state once we update the location state this is gonna re-render the template with the latest value that we assign how do we do that we need to use one of the events that gets triggered by the input in this case the onChange method and then change method we're gonna trigger a function a function that we're gonna have in our search bar component we're gonna detect uh, or we're gonna call it on input change and by default what we're gonna have is we're gonna have an event that's what usually happens we're gonna have an event that is gonna be passed on to that method that we're gonna be calling in order to call this input change method we need to first the on change is gonna emit an event which is gonna be determined with this we're gonna call it e and then we're going to access this on change on input change method with this on input change and inside here we're going to call it and pass that event we're going to do a simple test and let's say calling on input change we save let's start typing something and you're noticing that on input change is being called in here in our logs that's good now the next thing that what we're going to do is we need to update our state location because yes it's changing is is it's calling the, the on input change but it's not happening it's not updating my my text so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna first identify what's the event what kind of values we we get on the event then we start typing we get all of these informations and we start scanning taking a look at this we get the current element or current target yes we're going to access the target and the target should have value property value value is empty so let's see if we do something like this we do target that value and type in letter a w e we got that so the value has been stored in the e target the value so what we're going to do is we're going to set the state of the location and we're gonna update it with the target that value right update it with that and that should in theory we render template and with the updated values so now i'm gonna type this is a test and perfect now we're seeing that our values are being rendered in our component the first thing i want to do is remove this location we don't need it anymore i uh, just wanted to re-render it that's part of the value of the input and that's good we're halfway in the process this is a test and we have 
Another thing that is gonna happen is if you type the city name and you press enter because you are submitting, by default, it triggers an event and that event causes to refresh the page. We want to prevent that from happening. So in that case, we're gonna just find the on submit event uh, trigger by the form, or that's gonna trigger a new method that we're gonna have in our search bar component. We're gonna call it on form submit. And that one is gonna, once again, receive the event and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the event uh, we're gonna call this on form submit and once that's happen that happens we're gonna pass the event and what we're gonna do is we're gonna prevent default pre prevent default ex execution from happening so we're gonna type prevent default and that's just a method that the event object has which is going to prevent us from refreshing the page so in this case i save uh, let's say i'm typing the city where i was born press enter and now it is not refreshing our page perfect so far so good we develop our search bar component that's good we can add some styling uh, i'm gonna worry about styling the application at the end so let's not worry about that let's just worry about the functionality first first then next what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, you know create our weather api uh, file in order to make requests to our open weather map or open weather api available is just free for you to access uh, so you can get weather data specifically so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first we're gonna go to here to the open weather map just gonna provide the link in the description below in the section below so you can visit it once you do that the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna create an account i already created an account just nothing crazy just provide your details and there's gonna be pricing options if you're concerned about that there's a free one which most of the people use uh, for testing applications you know starters learning uh, how to use uh, apis uh, while learning some kind of framework in this case react so in this case we're just going to use a free version don't worry about it there's going to be a, a limit of requests that we can have to get data to fetch data so you might be wondering what's an api because i'm talking about this and you might be not knowing what what an api is so an api is an application programming interface and what that allows you to do is allow you to get some specific information about something related to that api let's say that they have this open weather company they have data right they have data related to the weather now in order for me to be able to access that they provide an interface a programming interface that i must be able to access with a user they're gonna be able to send me responses or send me information back based on the api endpoints that they have available so now what's an api endpoint let me show you just in a second so at the api uh, page uh, we are gonna see all of these options you can get the current weather data forecast for four days the one call api the daily forecast climatic forecast the bulk downloading all of this information and if you click on any of them this in itself it's gonna be you click on them you're gonna see all of some of some of this information with regards to getting the information for the current weather in this case and they're gonna provide you with the api call and the api call when in order for you to access that to make that request to this uh, url you need to provide the city name for example and the api key if we try to go to a different option our default cast four days is another api endpoint one call api it's another api and there are different api endpoints and different api endpoints allows you to retrieve certain kind of information so in case we were talking about cars and i would like to get all the car models well there will be an api endpoint for car models if there's an api endpoint for fetching all the years of all the models of the cars that we have created then we could have another api endpoint that gets all of the years it gets different kind of data but anyway hopefully you get that that concept api endpoint this is just one two three 
And in this case, we're going to use the current weather data API endpoint to access our API. Now, one of the things that you're going to see is that we need to, we can test this by copying in this. Uh, let's go ahead and paste it. Let's type it HTTP in our browser. And it says that we need a city name and we're going to type New York. Oh man, I cannot type today. New York. And then let's say we don't provide an API key. If we don't provide an API key. It says invalid API key. An API key is kind of like your password. It's kind of like your credentials. It's like a way for them to determine where you are you have access to their API where, for example, if you have paid, if this will be a paid service, if you have paid for that and then you generate a, a key, an API key for your account, then they're going to be able to determine, okay, with this key user XYZ, I try to access this API endpoint of the weather. Uh, we need to validate whether he or she can have access to, to this API. Endpoint. So as you see, the API key is kind of like important for us to access that information. So we need to start by generating an API key. If you go to the user name, you're going to see all of these options. You will see this, my API keys page, a link. Let's go to that page and you will see that my key is in here. Now, generally you don't share those API keys. This is just because it's a video. I'm just teaching you here. I'm just making it easy for you to understand, but you should not share your API keys. That's just one more thing. Now, another thing is that we're going to generate our API key if you haven't. So we're going to call this weather app react. Just this is just a name for us to, to be able to, to determine which key is this and then or for what thing we use this key. We just click on generate and you will see that the key is generated. Perfect. Now, remember our request that we had in here. The request is, is needing for that API key. And the way you pass that API key is by providing the app ID query parameter. So we type app ID and then we try to access our API key. And then we make that request. We're still getting some errors. Let's see what's the problem. Oh, I actually know what's the problem. I think it takes some minutes for, for, for open weather to just validate the key. So you have to just be patient. But let's say if I use one of the, the other API keys that I have used and test with it. App ID equals API key. Now you will see that we're getting some information, seeing the weather, ID, some description, stations, all of the stuff related to the weather in New York. Good. That's cool stuff. Now you can find more information if you visit the API and once again, just go to the API docs. And this is essentially what we're getting is a JSON response from the API request. And we're getting all of this information. I just provided an example for us to know what kind of information we can have access to. So for example, we can have access to the coordinates, to the weather, uh, to the temperature, field likes, visibility, the wind speed, stuff like that. So you can play with it. So how can we access this information? How can we make a request from our React application to this API? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install. We're going to go to our terminal and we're going to install Axios. Axios is just a popular library for you to make requests. So we're going to click, we're going to press enter. Let's install Axios. And while that's happening, what I want to create is a new folder in the source folder. And we're going to call this APIs. We have these APIs. And inside here, we are going to call open. We're going to create a new file called open weather uh, API. .js. Okay, so now we need to define our methods to make the request to our API. So in that case, we need to first import our Axios, uh, our Axios library, and we're gonna give it a name of Axios. Good. And we'll start typing Axios. We're gonna see all of these methods. We're gonna see get, post, create, defaults, etc., etc. 
So, what happens in here is that what we're doing is we're making a get request. Whenever you do this process, it's a get request. This might be a little bit more of concepts that you have to know. If you don't know get post request, please do a research about that. But essentially, we're just doing a get request. Uh, we're just typing the get function that is provided by Axios so we can make get requests. And inside here, we need to provide the URL. So in the URL, remember, they gave us this URL. We're going to copy it. We're going to paste it. And we're going to type HTTP colon and slash slash. Uh, we have this perfect now we need to be able to provide the city name and then the api key so in that way so in order to do that we need to create a method a function we're gonna call this function get current weather for that thing we're gonna type the location as the parameter and we're gonna put this axios of get inside here and i would like to pass the location inside here so we can pass the location in our query so in this case i'm going to use a different kinds of quotes now in order to pass the location instead of adding our url within quotes i'm going to use the template literals so we can provide the values and then we're going to do a dollar sign and we're going to type location so essentially what's happening here is we're pasting the location inside this, this text and then it's going to have whatever value we have in the location parameter is going to have it in here. So in a similar way, we could do that with our API key and in that way, we need to store our API key in a variable, right? My key, API key. And here we can type API key good now one thing that i'm going to tell you is that in the case of the api keys or some kind of sensitive information i don't recommend you to store that information in a variable in your project when it comes to this kind of information we usually store them in some kind of environment variables so i'm going to copy this one more time this api key i'm going to paste it in here but I said that we're not going to store them in environment variable. So sometimes you simply don't want to share some sensitive information out there. So, for example, how can we just generate our API or environment variables? Well, we can just simply go to our source or any place within your application. But in this case, let's just go to this source folder and we can generate this deep.env file. And this within here the env file we can just type all of our environment environment variables so you can type it just for example api key and in here equals this value we can do that but in react in order for you to add be able to access these environment variables the name of your environment variable needs to be preceded by the react underscore app underscore so now if we type this react app api key then we can have access to that api we save that and then we need to be able to access that so let's say for example we go to our search bar in our search bar component we are gonna just do a quick console log and we want to access that api key from our environment variables we do that by using the process that env and after that you just type environment variable name and it's gonna be this we're gonna type in my key additional log and we're gonna refresh we're gonna check out logs and we see that my key is set as undefined why because we need to define the values that we have in our environment variables folder and how do you do that so the first thing you need to do is just kill the project literally and then we need to use the source that env <clears throat> so essentially what you're sourcing the file containing the environment variables in this case dot env and make sure it's in in the correct order location so in this case i put it under dot env under the apis i'm going to change it to v just in the project outside project in general so i don't have to navigate throughout the whole process but anyway we have the source.env, good. And you wanna quickly inspect where <clears throat> our environment variables are, are working. You can just do an echo and dollar signs and then type the environment variable name. 
and then you will see that our key is there if you don't do this source at env and let's say i change the values of my environment variable and i do echo nothing is going to happen it's still having the previous values that we define so we have to do a source at env we do that and then we echo our api key and then we have once again our updated API key. Since that's not the one that I like, I'm gonna just set it back to the previous one. We're gonna do source, and then we're gonna do echo react app API key. Perfect. Now we just go to our open a weather API file, and in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do instead of using a variable name defined in our file, we're gonna type process that environment variable and then we're gonna type the name of our API key. Now actions that get is just a request and this is gonna return a promise. This is something that if you're not experienced with JavaScript, you are just learning, it's something that essentially promises normally execute asynchronous operations. So we're just gonna return this so we can have it accessible. So, so we return the, the actual request and then we can also export the method in itself. Uh, we're gonna export get current weather function from our open weather API JS file and then we're gonna import it in our search bar. We're gonna do an import. Let's say we're gonna import everything from our API. So we need to find the APIs, open weather API. And we're passing this get weather, get current weather function. Good. Now we have this function. Let's test this. Let's see if we can execute this. So we're gonna have get current weather. And I'm just gonna type a random location, once again, New York and functions in order to access the response of the function or the promises you're gonna it's gonna be preceded by the word that then and inside the dot then you're gonna get whatever response is passed from that request so we're gonna have response and we're just gonna simply just console log that response good we have that and we need to execute or run our application one more time npm run star so we are running our app one more time because i had stopped it to set up the environment variables let me remove this <clears throat> Now this process is happening in the constructor and the constructor is making this request, the get current weather request. Once you make that request, it's gonna get some response and you will see in the logs that we got responses. We got the config, data, headers, requests, so the information. And when you start taking a look at the data, you will start taking a look at the response that we got from that API endpoint. You will see that we have the New York, we have some clouds, properties, coordinates, latitude, longitude, which we're gonna use later on down the road. And then we have the weather. We have an array, which the weather, which contains the weather. We, we just, in general, we have a response, which is good. But now what we like to do is to display, to execute that request whenever we make, we submit our form. I'm just gonna cut all of that. I'm just gonna, once again, execute my current weather. And I'm gonna provide the location. Now remember the location is stored in our state so we're gonna access this state location first and then we want to access the response of that request as soon as we get it we're gonna type a log in fact i would like to store the current weather in my state so or the temperature so i'm gonna store it here in my state and I'm gonna generate some. I'm gonna add this diff in here in my template so we can add some paragraph containing my temperature. So I'm gonna create 
very well cool temperature and that's gonna be coming from this state temperature by the way you can also type just directly this state location or temperature but in general that's just my preference at the moment just use variable names I uh, store this into variable names and display that information we're gonna save uh, we're gonna remember we can access this API uh, documentation so we can go back again here to take a look at the response and that response we can see it under the JSON structure and we'll see that they have coordinates the weather the weather is past in kelvin the temperature is 282 that's that's the unit metric that they provide you can also provide that within your requests what kind of metrics you will want to get so they have this query param that you can provide within your request call units got the units and i'm gonna update our open weather api and that i would like it to contain units of they have metric imperial and in standard imperial is going to have the fahrenheit the metric is going to have the celsius so let's use the imperial at the moment and let's type imperial right we save that and let's log one more time my response and i know that is the data is containing within the data property so we're going to log that and we said that we should have access to that data to that temperature data inside the main property so we're gonna access main and we got the temperature here so it says temperature so this is gonna be Fahrenheit temperature okay <clears throat> let's see if that works and uh, let's go back to our application let's take a look at the logs type New York one more time press enter it makes a request and we get our temperature in New York <clears throat> now since we need to display that temperature in our component in our UI we need to update the state of the temp variable so in this case we're gonna do this state set temp sets no actually this set state my bad then we access the temperature or temp property we set the state and that should update the template new york there it is we got 33 degrees fahrenheit in new york kind of cold down there right now as you saw we created our weather api using the open weather map now the next step is we need to create our current weather component so what happens in here is that right now we are displaying the, the the weather within our search bar component i really don't want it this way because i would like to have a separate component just displaying the weather information the current weather information in that way we're going to create a new component and that component we can create a new file that file let's call it current weather js good or inside that file we're going to import react one more time and then we're going to generate our component this is going to be called current weather extends extends react that component good then we're going to have remember we're going to have to have a render method in order to render the information and inside here is where i would like to display the weather so i'm gonna call this and i would like to start setting up the structure of how i would like to display this current weather component i'm gonna type a class name this is gonna be called current weather i'm gonna have also I want to display also the feels like information so I'm gonna split this into things because we're gonna have our current weather and inside here we're gonna contain the actual temperature we're gonna have a temperature of just for template purposes so we can test this 
Column paragraph. Then the temperature. Also, we can have the description. We can copy this. We can have the description. <clears throat> now I'm adding all of that, all of these names, because that's what I'm going to use for uh, for my CSS to be able to style this properly. So let's say it's cool or clear. Or sunny. Let's call it sunny. It's more clear. That sunny. We got the description. Uh, let's say main content let's call it content and then we can also have other information such as this current weather feels like it feels like 32 okay got that now let's make this let's export this make it accessible other files are exporting this current weather let's go to our app.js let's import that one more time current weather from components current weather and now let's access or let's add that component in our app.js template app component current weather we save and we're displaying our Current weather, perfect. We're gonna have also probably an image. Uh, let's see, the image is gonna contain a URL with the icon of the weather. And in the meantime, we're not displaying anything. Let's type a name, last name. Current weather icon. Okay. Information just right now. We don't have any image. So if you notice, we have this current weather. And remember, we have this current weather in here. But then we have this search bar, right? And the search bar is the one containing the location. And the search bar is the one making the request to get the current weather. This is something that you have to understand right away, especially when developing more complex applications. This search bar is a child component of the app component. Generally, we would like to have app component or the parent component being able, the one who defines the state, the ones who keeps track of the state, not the child component. So in this case, what I would like to do is just instead just get all of these values <clears throat> from the state, get all of these values from here, all of the state, and just pass it on to the app component. So let's go ahead and this app component is a functional component. Let's convert it into a class component. Sense from react, extends react that component. And then we need to have our render function. Our render function is gonna return our template, right? Perfect. And then we are gonna literally use most of the things that we have in here in our search bar. Our state. And yes, we're gonna copy the uninput change on form submit. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna store them. In here now we're keeping the state we need to import the api file I'm gonna copy it from here i'm in here i'm gonna import that we gotta get current weather good okay we have all of that information let's see what else is missing this import is not correct Okay, let's update the location. What else is missing? We need to import React as well. From React. We import React. We have access to React. Now everything is working back to normal. But let's say, remember I said that we shouldn't have the state in the child component. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this. This is stay from here, right? And we're gonna remove this set state because we're not setting the state in here either. And we're not gonna set the state, or we're not gonna make this request at all in here either. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna have, we're gonna have an error because we don't have this state location that is used in here. So we don't have this anymore. And let's say that we don't have these values right now. The location value. So I'm gonna type location something temporal just so we can fix the error. We have this state location, that's fine. This is state temperature has been displayed here. So what happens in here is that we need to we need to communicate between components, so the information. Now, the way you communicate between a parent component to a child component is by passing the information using the props to the child component. If we go to our parent component and in our parent component, we say that we want to pass the location to our search bar, we can say that the search bar is going to have a prop and that property or props is going to be called location. And I'm going to provide the location, the value of the location is going to be equal to the location, the state location that I have in my app, JS file. Now, if you go back to your search bar, you will see that the constructor is receiving these props. And essentially, that's how we can access to that. And we go back to our search bar, we can just simply access those props uh, in here. So if we go to our render, function and we do props or these props that location and let's say that I'm going to provide the location the default location in our app component is going to be New York one more time save that and this is not working let's see what it's missing Oh, actually, I had to refresh. I just refresh a page, and you see now that the value was coming just passed. So I'm just gonna set this back to empty. The same thing we're gonna do with the temperature, but actually, I don't want the temperature there, I just want the temperature in the current weather. So, in that way, we can just go back to our search bar and we can just delete this so we don't display the temperature anymore right now the other thing that is happening here is that let's say i'm going to start typing something and it's happening what's happening is that we are not getting the search the input updated well remember this is dependent on the props that location so what happens is that we need to update these props location the props are read only it's something that you don't update in order to update the props we need to update the value pass on into that props look at that location which is coming from the parent element but we need to be able to tell the parent element that we got a new value that that there's some some kind of action happening in the input this on change on input change is happening and we need to tell the parent element that something's happening so how do we do that so we, we, the way we do that is by using a prop and that prop is gonna almost like act as a, as a function to emit those values to the parent component so we're gonna say that these props and we're gonna say that the input we're gonna have a prop called input change and on there we're gonna pass the event this is a function we're gonna pass the event and now we go to our app component we're gonna have this prop called on input change that input change is emitting this event, right? I would like to get access to that event into my on input change. This on input change, and we're gonna pass the event. <clears throat> we format this a little bit better. We save and let's try it one more time. Now this is working. Why? Because we are getting triggering we're triggering this input change 
this input change is updated once again the state location and whenever the state location gets updated it triggers this render process and whenever the render process happens <clears throat> it's going to emit the latest location value to the props uh, location to the search bar and the search bar subsequently is going to have this value also we need to be able to do a similar thing with the unsubmit so we need to be able to detect whenever the form gets submitted so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new prop form submitted and we're gonna provide we don't we don't need to provide any method we just want or any parameter just gonna go back in here and we're gonna get access to that prop form submitted and whenever that form gets submitted this method is gonna get triggered on form submit in our app component whenever that happens we'll need to prevent default because that's been prevented in the search bar component but what we need to do is we need to update our current weather that's going to happen and then whenever that happens we need to be able to communicate over current weather component about the temperature once again we create props we create props for our current weather in this case we're going to say current temperature and current temperature is going to be equal to this state temperature temp and we need to go back into our current weather component and inside here we need to set we need to access to our props these props and we set that to current temperature okay let's try this so let's say i'm gonna type one more time new york make the request it makes a request and then it passes through the child component the current weather component the current temperature perfect <clears throat> now we need to access other information such as the description uh, it feels like as well and also we can also have access to the to the url of the icon link and they provide the open weather api they provide so let's take a look at example file that they have for accessing the main temperature feels like so okay so what we're gonna do we are going to go back into our app component our app component we're gonna find more props uh for the current weather we're gonna say feels like this is one this state feels like temperature we're also gonna provide the description or the main description let's say description this state description and I'm setting a state because I need to store all of these values in my state as well uh, we got state description and also I think we need the icon URL I think they provide it somewhere in here oh here icon and I'll explain to you in a second how to get access to that icon it's gonna be equal to this is state this is state that icon okay so now we need to make sure that we add those properties for our state we are adding feels like set it to empty description icon good now we're gonna update those values from our request our request is gonna contain feels like as well press that data and that data is gonna be the feels like it's gonna be under this property that main that feels like and then we're gonna have a description that we need to update as well press that data and the description is going to be under the weather array and it's going to be under the main you can also get the description here i'm just going to take the main so 
So let's get weather. Let's get access or access the first variable or the first item of that array. And let's access the main. Good. We need to also access the icon or update the icon. And I'm going to copy pretty much all of that. Press that data icon. Good. Now we do that. We need to go back into our current weather. Go ahead and update all of these values with these props. Call it description. We have the fill slide. Feels like these props that feels like and also for the icon essentially they have the open weather api they have the ability for you to access the, the icons that they provide yeah i think that is using this particular one this url i will add it in the description below and the way you get the url or the icon image is by using this url you're gonna have the icons and night icons it's cataloged by a d preceded by a number d of day n of ninth and then description let's see if we copy this for example this is just an example of the image and then you will see that the image is of a day rainy day now they also tell us that you can provide you can essentially get a larger image by typing the 2x 2x time two times the, the image the size you can also do four times the image image size and so forth okay a look that we need to do in here is to get this as part of the url right and let's generate it in here to make it simpler Create a variable containing that value. And we're gonna do a template literal for this. Okay, so we know that if we go in here, we're gonna get an icon of 10n, and then we provide the size that we we'll like, and then that PNG. Okay, let's do that. Let's type the size 2x, or let's do it a little bit bigger, 2x. PNG. Let's provide the URL and let's save it. This is complaining because it's missing a lot right now. So we can take as an advantage or as a reference the same description. Okay, let's go ahead and power up. And we are going to display the weather from New York. We press enter and in new york is 33 degrees the clouds we change it to a different place let's say san antonio we get the values updated perfect ah oh, i just realized that the image is not displaying right now what's going on here so we're expecting the element we see that the url is http ah oh, well actually i was playing around there and type in the wrong URL here. Let's remove that extra HTTP. Let's refresh the page. Let's type one more time, New York. Still is not working. We're gonna copy this URL from the image tag. Let's see, execute it if that works. But that works. Huh, okay, I made a mistake. I got confused for a second, but we're using the wrong attribute. The attribute that we need to use is a source attribute. I completely forgot about it. Good. Now you get to see the image uh, related to the, the current weather. So let's try one more time. It will change it. Okay, let's try a different location. There it is. Okay, it's, it's been updated or it's getting updated correctly. Good. So we got the current weather, we got the feels like, we got the description and the current weather. Perfect. Okay, we got good there. Now, what's the next step? The next step is to create the forecast weather component. So let's gonna create that component. 
forecast weather that is correct and once again we're gonna import from react from react and we're gonna do a class we're gonna name it as forecast from or extend sorry react that component perfect we have to have our render method at least that and then that method is going to return the content that we would like to display in there that's going to be a list containing a parent element and let's say that the parent element is going to contain this class call forecast okay we're going to export this by default this class or this component and also we're gonna go to the app component and include it as part of our component so import weather uh, actually forecast from components forecast weather okay let's add that in the template we got forecast and let's just type something real quick my forecast just to verify if this is being it's getting rendered let's refresh it's not getting rendered oh i forgot to save on the app component my forecast okay cool perfect now one of the things that i'm going to recommend you to do is to start try to keep your imports organized it might sound a little bit dumb at the beginning but sometimes it makes a little bit of a difference so generally you will want to add your third-party libraries on top at least as my personal preference i like to keep the imports of of libraries dependencies in the top then a section for the components sections for the styles related to that particular component and also sections for the API services uh, files that we have in this case they get the open weather API so in here we're gonna have our forecast so our forecast is gonna display hourly forecast of what's gonna be the weather based on the location right so we need to find that API endpoint first one more time I already did a little bit of work uh, just inspecting the, uh, the different API endpoints that they have available so we can see what we could take advantage of and what we cannot so let's take a look at the api and then the one that we're gonna need for our hourly hourly forecast is gonna be this the one called api it says that it's got the minute forecast the hourly forecast the daily forecast the historical data national weather alerts etc and this is the one that we care about the hourly forecast so let's go to the API docs and let's start taking a look at the API endpoints. This is the API endpoint. So it says that we got the one call API endpoint and it says that it's asking for the lat and the long query parameter, which are the latitude and longitude. Essentially, they are asking the latitude and longitude for the area you're looking for. So for example, if you type New York, you have to type uh, the latitude and longitude of New York. But where do we get that latitude and longitude values? Well, in the previous API endpoint that we use for getting the current weather, that API endpoint, let me show you. In the current weather API endpoint, we take a look at the example JSON file. You can see that they can, they can send us the coordinates and in the coordinates, they send us the longitude and latitude of the particular location that we type. So that's good. Okay, so if that's the case, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna set up our function to make the request to the one call API endpoint so we can get the hourly forecast. Take a look, let's go to the open weather API JS file and we're gonna create another function. We're gonna call it get forecast and we're gonna provide the latitude and the longitude we're gonna type lat or longitude lon and we got our function our function is gonna return that promise the promise is pretty much our 
request to our API endpoint. Let's see. We copy all of this. We paste this in here. And using a string or using template literals, we're going to update this uh, with dollar signs. And then we open and close curly braces. The same thing for the longitude. Good. We also set the exclude query parameter to exclude certain forecast values, but in this case, I don't care. We can just keep all of the values there. We need to provide our API key. Provide our API key by accessing our environment variable that we call initially React App API key. Okay. Now, if you notice, this URL, it's the base of the URL is the same. So what we can do is just store that in a variable called base URL. And we can copy all of that, paste it in here, and just replace that with our variable base URL. Okay. The same thing we could do it with the get forecast method. Okay. Get forecast, I'm gonna use the base URL. Good, perfect. Now, we could do this, but also actually give us a way to also set up a base URL. So if you're starting to look at the documentation, you will find that Axios has a defaults property, and that defaults property is gonna contain, it's, a, it's an object that's gonna contain all of these different values, and within one of them is gonna contain the base URL. So within here, we can say the base URL for Axios, and we can remove this. Uh, we could also remove this. So why did I remove this? So what's happening here behind the scenes is that Axios, the defaults, defaults base URL, what happens is that at the moment of making a request, it's already appending this URL. And then whenever you start adding the URL for that particular API endpoint, it's gonna add that at the end. It's gonna be the same as having this, the beginning of the request URL, and then they're gonna attach the subsequent section. Also, we know that we're gonna need our app API, app ID token or key. So we can store that in a query param or in a variable. App ID query param. And keep that in here. Uh, template using the template literal. And it would change this. And now we use app ID query param. It's going to be the same as having all of this information. So we're going to copy and paste here. Okay, good. My longitude, I'm using the wrong variable. And I notice that longitude is going to be equal to the value. Okay, now that's good. Also, we need to make this available so we can export it and make it available for all files to get access to this method. But the first thing we're going to test is we're going to test whether this works or not after setting our base URL. So let's go to our project and let's type New York. And is it still working? That's good. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do is we need to get our forecast. So when do we get our forecast uh, or make the forecast request? We can make it at the moment of getting the current weather. Whenever we get the current weather, remember, we get the coordinates. And the, once we get the coordinates, we can make the request to get the forecast. So the first thing is we're going to need to be able to have access to our 
new method called get forecast from the open weather API file. Then we're gonna get use of, or make use of that, get forecast, and we're gonna store the values in a variable. So from here we're getting the latitude which is gonna be equal to rest that data that core that lat the same thing for longitude okay we got that that's good and then we can use these variables in here but the problem with here is that these variables are within this scope and as soon as we try to use it in here the get forecast is not within the same scope essentially we cannot use it the, the scopes these variables are need to be defined within different scopes so what we're gonna do to make this work is we're gonna convert this into an asynchronous scope or actually we're gonna convert this into a synchronous process because whenever you make a request in reality that's just an asynchronous process an asynchronous process means that you have to wait. I mean, it's, it's not something that gets executed right away. In order to, to get a response from that API endpoint, it takes some time. Sometimes it's just quick. Sometimes it's not that quick. It's just quick oftentimes, so you'll notice that it's asynchronous. But in reality, making a request is an asynchronous operation. And this is a promise. So we're going to, instead of doing accessing the values using that then, we're gonna convert this function, this on form, on form submit function into any sync function. By doing that, we could have access to, or we can use the await keyword. And what happens in here is that the await keyword is gonna return the values from the response of this request. And we no longer have to have this that then anymore. So in the meantime, we're just going to this out so I can explain it a little bit more. But what happens is that we're going to store the response, weather response, right? And so what happens is that weather response is going to same, be the same as rest that we have whenever we access it using the dot then method. Right, so whether response is going to have this data and then it's going to have all of the information that comes with it. So in that way, we could have access to our latitude and longitude. But instead of using the res variable, we're going to use the weather res variable. Good. Now we got, we updated that value. We also want to keep this value this is set state somewhere in here and i'm gonna tell you why in a second good now the second thing is that we need to make the request to get the forecast so we're gonna store the values in here in this variable called forecast response and then we're gonna put our await now, something I didn't mention is that as soon as you make this await, you add this await to a promise. What's happening is that until that promise finishes the process of getting a response, in this case, this request finishes getting a response, the subsequent are not gonna be executed. So if you don't have this, if we do it like in, in the previous way where we do like the get current and then we use that then, right we log something happens but then let's say that we're gonna depend upon this to execute a different process so for example to store our latitude and longitude for example if we have a another variable containing this weather right we store or assign the response to the weather res. And then we try to set up the value of the latitude in this variable. It's probably gonna fail. 
because since this process is an asynchronous, this process gets executed, but that doesn't mean that it's gonna finish on, and then it executes the other one. So this process can take, the process of getting requests can take like about two seconds, one second or milliseconds, but it takes some time. And then by the time it runs this line of code, this process hasn't finished. So whether rest is undefined still, until here we set up a value. And so if we try to access undefined that data in here, it's gonna fail. And we can do a quick test a uh, second. If we try to execute this, for example, uh, we try to run our app. Let's display the console. Let's see, New York, one more time, search. And you see that we're getting errors. Says cannot read property data of undefined. And that's exactly what I mentioned a second ago. Whether, whether rest variable doesn't have any values. So it's gonna be undefined and that's gonna fail. So that's why we need to add the a wait keyword. So in that way, this process, this asynchronous process, we convert it into a synchronous process. Good. We access the latitude, the longitude, and now we need to get access to the, or make the request to get the forecast. By providing the latitude, longitude, and we're gonna wait until that gets a response. And what we're gonna do is we're going to set the state. Uh, remember, we used to use this rest whenever we had a response for, for, for weather rest. So we need to just update these variables. Once we update the variables, it's gonna have weather rest, that data, that main temperature is gonna work just fine. But we want to store our forecast. And that forecast most likely is gonna be an array. If we check out the documentation again, uh, we take a look at the JSON file for that request. We see the current one, huh, we can use the current. They also provide the current. They have minutely, they have hourly, hourly forecast, and hourly is gonna contain this array of values. Okay, so we're gonna store forecast that data, and we're gonna have hourly. Hourly is gonna be an array, good. And that should be it pretty much. That we need, good. As soon as we do the set state, it's gonna re-render and we need to provide the forecast values to our forecast component. So we're gonna create a props called hourly forecast. And we should probably give it a more appropriate name to here. So it's gonna call hourly forecast. And in here, we are gonna set this state. Inside, we're gonna have to set the hourly forecast array. So we could have access to here, to the hourly forecast, or we set the state to hourly forecast. And then let's just change it to forecast this prop, and let's set it to this state, hourly forecast. Good. Now. We're going to go to our forecast weather component and we're going to iterate through each one of those values. Let's see my forecast. We're going to generate a component or a container. Ah, actually, we're going to do a little bit different for so what's happening is that we're gonna generate multiple multiple little sections containing the forecast for each hour, right? We're gonna have the div for, oh no, forecast for 10 p.m., forecast for 11 p.m., forecast for 12 a.m., right? And so forth. We're gonna have all of these. And that's gonna contain the same the structure is going to have an icon, it's going to have a text, it's going to have the hour, the forecast, it's going to have some information that's going to be repeated over and over. 
so what we can do is we can just create a variable containing the template that is going to be displayed because we need to access or generate that over and over and again so in order to do that we first need to access our props and we call that we are going to access this forecast prop yes we said that our props is going to be called forecast and that forecast prop is going to be an array so it's going to be an array an array has a map and a map we're going to return a template and that template could be this right so it's going to have this but i know that the forecast contains more information than this so first thing we're gonna set up a name for this we're gonna call it forecast item to that wrapper element and then we're gonna add a new paragraph and that paragraph we're gonna display the temperature we are going to display the description we need to display also the time and they are sending us this date time and I already checked this API and endpoint so what we need to do is we need to generate this or convert this just so we could get the hours so if we copy or we open just quickly our developer tools just so we could check what's that time and we just copy this time and we create new date we paste it that it's gonna tell us that is on gonna is this date is on 1970 and that's not correct so in reality they are sending us the value differently we need to just do a multiply or we just need to multiply that value by ten a thousand and yes and that value should be the correct value this is more valid 2020 i mean i think it's just it's just uh, example data so that might be the day when they generated this data okay so we do that and then we just need to get the hours okay we have six so that's how we're gonna get the hour by generating a new date f f hourly hourly it's gonna have the date time times thousand to get the hours good now what happens in here is that if we get some hours let's say I can exactly use my current time right now so if I get hours right now it's 15 or 3 p.m. so we get the hours we're gonna get 15 but I don't want to display it like that I would like to display it 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. I don't want to display it with the 15 uh if it goes all the way just on all the way up to 12 and it starts all over to 1 p.m you know you get the idea so in this case we're gonna use a let uh, to define our variable name and we're gonna say if our hour is greater than 12 that means that it's gonna be p.m right so our is going to be equal to it's going to be in the afternoon but if we just subtract 12 to whatever the value the future is for example 13 minus 12 it should be 1 14 minus 12 or 14 minus 12 it should be 2 15 minus 12 3 you get the idea so we're gonna subtract the code the current hour minus 12 and we're gonna get the updated value also we are gonna store um, the a.m. and the p.m. so at the moment I'm just gonna say that it's gonna be a.m. and if the hour is greater than 12 
I'm going to set it that it's going to be PM. Good. OK, we have the hour. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to display the hour and AM and PM. Also, I'm going to add some class, class names for each one of those, for cast item, hour, temperature, description, and also I would like to display the icon. They have an icon in here within the weather property. Let's see, how are we gonna display this? We got the temperature, the, we're gonna display it in between here. So we're gonna have the image. We're gonna have a source. And the source is gonna contain the URL. I'm just gonna take as a reference the same URL that we took for the current weather component. We copy this URL, add it in the forecast. Good. And the only little difference here is that we're gonna get the icon a little bit smaller. At the moment, probably like 2x. And let's see what else is missing. This should be f that weather. The first item of the weather array that icon and now we're gonna type our url in here also remember we need to provide the alt otherwise it's gonna complain about it and we could use the description good now that should be it uh, let's see what else is missing. Oh, we generated this and we need to return or keep this in a variable. This is going to contain forecast items because we're returning these templates and we're going to append that inside our wrapper element. got this wrapper element and in here we're gonna call the forecast items and good let's try let's save it and let's try that let's try with New York good we're getting multiple yeah we get the forecast we get the forecast for 3 p.m. Get the forecast 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. So that's good. It's just that it's not styled correctly. So it's kind of like confusing. Don't worry, we're going to get it to make it look prettier than this. I promise. Just stick with me. Okay, and also we're getting some warnings in here. And it's telling us that each child in a list should have a unique key prop. And that's correct. That's something that is part of React. Whenever you're generating an array of templates, uh, each it's gotta have some kind of differentiator and you have to differentiate that using a key so in this case we need to provide a key and that key needs to be unique though in this case i don't want to complicate it too much um, i just want to access the index provided by the map function so essentially the map function provides this index value as a second parameter and it's just saying that uh, Whenever it iterates through the forecast, let's say for the forecast number one, it's going to say that the index is zero. For the forecast number two, it's going to be the index number two. Forecast number three, index number two, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just going to use the index as our key, and we're going to be able to differentiate that. OK, that should be plenty. I recommend you to you could add a more meaningful name. Well, in fact, let's just do it right away. Forecast item and then let's do a template literal. Okay, 
let's give this a try. Continuous run. Okay, let's just change it. It key. Okay, got the key. Good. We refresh. Let's take a look whether we have or not some error. So we get to New York. And let's see. Okay, our error went away. Good. We got our forecast method or component completed. That's good. And we can just complete this section. Now it comes the fun part. We just have to install our application. I already have in my mind what I how I would like to install this. So let's just get started. Let's just start with our search bar component. Let's install that. And for that one, I'm gonna create a search bar CSS or SAS file instead. Search bar that s c s s file in our search bar i didn't set any classes to differentiate all of these values okay so i'm going to add some values actually yes let's add some values to see search bar last name search bar button last name search bar underscore input okay and we're gonna do use these values as a reference to style our component uh, we're gonna do access the, the element using the class using the dot or the period and then the class name and then we're just gonna style provide according styles okay so we're gonna do we're gonna access the search bar button and the search bar input as well so we could do it by doing this. Uh, we're just instantly providing styling for the search bar button and also the search bar input. So what happening here is that since I'm using SAS, I'm typing this ampersand. Uh, what that what the ampersand does is it takes this first initial section and then it happens it with this. And this is just the same as saying search bar underscore button and then you provide the correct styling and that's why i was just naming it search dash bar so i could include all of my solid within the search bar styling okay so first thing i want to do is make the background transparent okay It's not working and it's not working is because I need to import my styles. We're gonna import our styles search bar uh, sas file and now our, our background is transparent. The border, I don't like that border, I'm just gonna set it to one pixel, solid. Let's just try something like white in the meantime. And then we will experiment and play around with it. Okay, good. Now the other thing I would like to do is I'm gonna change the color because I I'm not a big fan of that color. And I'm gonna use as a reference the icons that they send us. So you know that whenever I type New York and I get all of these values, we get those icons, right? This icon is symbolizing that it's dark. Uh, there's an icon that symbolizes that it's sunny. And I'm gonna use the color of that as a reference to to start generating my my styling. 
for my whole lab. I have an extension here so I can quickly identify the color and I get the hex number of that color. So I can modify first and foremost the background of my app. And let's go ahead, let's find out. We got the background color, it's this RGB red. I'm gonna change it for this. And I want to get it a little bit darker than that. I save, it looks darker, that's better. I would like to increase the padding to that. You can play around with that if you use your developer tools and start typing some stylings. And remember, those stylings are gonna be removed if you don't save them in your actual SAS file. But that's just for a way to quickly take a look at how it's looking your application with changes on the fly, with style changes on the fly. Okay, so let's do first scene is the width of. Let's expand this a little bit more. Okay, I would like the search bar to cover the maximum width. So, first thing, good. Now, I also would like the search bar to have a margin top, let's say 10 pixels in the meantime, margin bottom. 10 pixels okay we got that we got our form and our form i would like the button or the and the input a different styling so for the input i would like to if you notice the the left border is set up but then also on the bottom we have the right border and it's also there so we have kind of like two borders there i'm just going to use one of them and i'm going to use the one for the search button so i'm going to remove that for the input button so we got border left and that's going to be zero pixels good i also would like to make i'll give it some radius to the border and it's going to be just to the top left or top right and bottom right of the input border bottom uh, right radius let's say it's gonna be what 15 pixels uh, that's a lot seven pixels sure let's try seven pixels at the moment border top right radius seven pixels i would like to increase the size of this as well so i'm gonna make it a little bit taller uh 45 pixels might be a little bit too much let's do it 35 pixels okay the same thing we're gonna do or we're gonna copy this just for references purpose we're gonna have that the high is gonna be this okay we are going to do the radius but not on the right on the bottom but on the left radius good same thing border top left radius five good now we do have these what else is missing here see just to make it sure that it's matching we're gonna use a form this is gonna be a display flex Okay, so I'm just literally going to copy and paste this in my styles. So this is going to be for the search input. Right, so I'm going to add all of the styles for that one. The same thing is going to be for the search button. Search button. And this at the bottom also we need to add the standings for the search bar wrapper element good and we quickly save and refresh and we still have something not working correctly see let me do something i forgot probably we could do a display flex on the form there it is that's what we need we need to display flex on the form and what's happening is that it's just 
making sure to do that the search button uses the same height as the input okay so let's add another class and we're gonna use it for here class name search bar form and update this we're gonna add the form we're gonna say display equals flex okay we got that fix got something else missing here it's not taking the full width ah okay we need to make sure that it grows the width of our input i'm gonna use flex pro one and that should take the whole width or the rest of the width of the whole search bar also we want to add i would like to add a padding to the app component okay so we're gonna do padding let's say 15 in the meantime uh i don't really like that if that's not the one that i'm looking for let's see padding margin well the margin is gonna no that's not the one that we're looking for actually see take a look at the our app template the one that we're using is the app header okay and the app header is the one that needs the the pad good now also i don't like the fact that my contents and the app header are in the middle i just want it all the way at the top at least the search bar so i'm going to remove this align item center that it has by default let me see what i'm missing of that okay perfect i think that the search input might be a little bit too big Let's see let's try using 25 25 is better back let's just remove this display flex there it is this display flex we have i'm gonna check our app header the app header has got the pad in there okay it look it looks decent it's not the best but it's looking decent uh, now we need to style our or components so the first one is going to be the current weather and i noticed something and the thing is that i would like to automatically search initially whenever i i open the application to search the uh, specific location and display the information it makes a request to get the information so what i'm gonna do is by default i'm gonna set a location of new york and i'm gonna type the city where i was born because that's the one that i prefer good so we got this and we need to trigger this on form submit because the on form submit is the one that sets the updated values once it gets the request or makes a request to get the weather data so we're gonna do this on submit on form submit uh, let's try that one more time and then we're getting our values right away that's good so next we're gonna style our current weather component the same thing we're gonna create our current weather sas file at css and we need to make sure that we're importing it into our current weather component current weather sas file okay now we're gonna have all of these class names that we previously set so we have the current weather wrapper element let's see if we can set this somewhere in here so we can check so we got this current weather the current weather is going to contain 
the content. The content. There's also temp. There's also description. There's an icon as well. And there's a feels like. Like. Okay. So let's start playing with it in our developer tools. So for the weather, we got the full width. I would like to give it some type of background different from the one that we're using. A little bit of lighter background and i'm gonna use first select the primarily background that we're using and slowly finding a lighter color i think i'm gonna stick with that in the meantime i don't like it that square looking so i'm gonna make the borders being round with border radius Let's set it to seven pixels because that's the one that we use for our search bar. Let's say what else? We're going to take a look at our content. And the way I want to display the content is the temperature in the left side, the description right underneath, and then also the, the image, the icon right up, uh, right. Right to the right of, of the description, and it feels like I would like to display it all the way top right of the current weather component. So let's start with the this initial content. And in order to, to, to separate this first, we need to make the current weather display set it to display as flex. Okay, so now we have those values for, right side by side. Now we're gonna select our content. And for our content, we have temperature, we have description, image. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're going to wrap the temperature and the description inside another inside another element. Okay, I'm gonna call last name equals current weather text. Call it like that, and we are gonna use content down text. Okay, we got our text. And the text is also, oh, I lost my, my styling that I had because I had refreshed the page. So one more time, let's get this back again. So we're gonna get display flex, background color. Pick any random one and let's start playing with it. And then lighter color. Okay. Border radius. Seven pixels. And let's save that in our styling styles file. Good. We got that. Now this our thing. We're gonna go to our current weather content. We would like to separate it one more time. Let's play. Flex, okay, we're displaying it side by side. And we're gonna do that right away. Save it in our content. Also, I would like them to be in the center as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the current weather text containing the Fahrenheit, the weather and the description. We're gonna also use Flex. Actually, let me try something different. I'm gonna align the items in the center. Okay. 
So that should be sufficient. Also, another thing that I'm going to do is there's a lot of padding or margin between the description and the temperature. Let's remove that. And let's say the margin is going to be zero at the moment. Margin zero. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay. And we're using that for both description and temperature. So we can just combine them, separate them by a comma, and assign the same style property. Margin zero. Okay. I would like to also add some padding in here. Like probably a padding of 10 pixels just in the meantime. Okay, now that's looking better. The image is looking a little bit too big, the icon. So let's see if we can just decrease the size of it. 150 pixels. Yep, 150 pixels. See, let's increase the size of temperature. But let's first save the width for the image. Size of the temperature. Let's try the font size of 24. Not two, but 24 pixels. A little bit more, 42. And for the description, font size. Let's say 16 pixels. Uh, 14, let's say it's 14, or let's say it's 16. I prefer 16. Okay. Set so the temperature, font size, 14 pixels. Description, font size. 16 pixels and actually I meant to say this is 42 or 48 42 set it to 42 something that I miss is to use the degree sign the degree symbol yeah this degree so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna add it to my temperature Okay, it looks more like a degree. Good. Let's see what else is missing. Now this feels like I'm gonna set it more to the right. This right now it's more to the left. So let's go ahead and inspect this element. Uh, let's see weather. So in order to fix that, what we could do is to use just the five. If we select the current weather, by the way, we justify the content and we can do a space between. Okay. Now our text is more to the right. Also, we would like to add the degree symbol to the fields like, and that text is a little bit too big for my preferences. It's too big, so I'm gonna remove the margin first and also add a font size of probably 12 pixels, okay, maybe 14 pixels. Okay, good. We have that and we save it under the fields like. Okay, now it's looking a little bit better. I don't like the fact that this is not in the center. Let's see what's missing. You probably have to do a sec, uh, text align center. No, 
at the end of a trick, but let's see, let's try something different. Just in case for testing purposes, we do uh, this. No, I think that that's okay. That should be okay. Yeah, we got that. We don't need this right now. Okay. We got that looking a little bit better. What else do we need here? We need to install our hourly forecast as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, go ahead to the components folder, create your forecast weather. That's as file. And we're going to import that into our forecast. I'm just going to put this down here so we can easily look the template. But yeah, I'm going to put this, or we're going to import the forecast SAS file in my forecast component. Good. Perfect. And here we're using the forecast. Okay. Wrapper element and each of those are going to have a forecast item. The forecast item is going to contain the hour and also it's going to contain the description and also the temperature. Okay, good. Now I need to display it first all of these items side by side. So the way we're gonna do it is by using the display flex. But another thing that I wanna add is a title because I cannot tell if this forecast is by hour, by minutes, by days. I'm just gonna add a quick title real quick. It's three hourly forecast or just gonna add in the name of forecast a type we got that good now we're gonna do forecast title okay and now let's take a look at the forecast inspected so we can take a look at the forecast parent component i was thinking to do a display flex as well so we can get all of our items to the right okay but that's not gonna work because it's gonna set our items and our title next to each other so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna wrap add the forecast items within another wrapper element that's going to be called forecast items now inside here we're going to add the forecast items good and we're going to have the items the items is going to be having a display flex so we can set all of those items next to each other Uh, something is missing let's see oh i didn't save on the forecast weather so that's why let's try one more time refresh still it's not working okay so i noticed one of the things that it was telling us is is warning error message can call set state on a component that is not yet mounted so essentially components have a life cycle and one of those life cycle events or, or hooks is called whether the component has been mounted or not and we're going to use that so we can use this on form submit which is essentially the one that is going to update our data so component did mount 
now we're gonna move this on form submit method to here and uh, we're gonna refresh our page and you will see that the error message is gone another error message that i'm looking at is that the open weather app the image is not found because it's not correct the url is missing the actual icon and i think that what's happening is that's happening in the current weather yes because that's the one that we're using with 4x four times the image size the regular image size so let's see we're providing the icon props from the app component we have this icon this state icon icon weather icon see the request json file the weather should be there see if we are missing something let's log the response weather response weather response we love that get the data data weather ray that main id icon oh something is weird here uh probably that's happening at the beginning because at the beginning we don't have any value or any data so it's not gonna retrieve anything hmm okay let's do something in case we don't have anything we're gonna go to our current weather uh, component and in case we don't have a url if we're gonna set our image and if is props that icon is present we're gonna set our image and that image is gonna contain this URL uh, we're gonna use this so it's gonna be equal to that template literal uh, actually this is a different thing to do yes it's a different thing no this is actually our image and uh, we're gonna replace all of that and we use our image variable let's refresh one more time we got rid of the error message good now let's go back in here let's remove the log good now let's keep let's keep Installing our app. So one of the things I was trying to do is just to add some kind of background to the forecast, and it's not been added right now. So let's go to our forecast weather. And one of the things that I noticed, and it was my mistake, is that I have not I have not correctly imported the SAS file. So I need to include that css ss and now we're getting our background that's good now that's a little bit of a bad background for us right now so let's inspect the elements so we can make changes on the fly we're gonna get a background white and the phone or the color I would like to have a color of at the moment just black okay good also i don't know if i like that overflow let me see because you see that there's too many too many atoms that doesn't that don't fit in the container i will take care of that in a second so let's change the background color and at the moment just 
let's change the color of the text that's good also i want to change this margin zero with the temperature to zero at the moment and that temperature working in the temperature in kelvin so let's go ahead and go to the open weather api and we still we need to type the or we need to add the units query param so it's imperial so we get it in fahrenheit we update see something is wrong double ampersands we refresh something is still wrong see what's missing oh i needed another ampersand here there it is okay now we got that fix we got it on fahrenheit again we need to add the degrees symbol but i don't find that and weather okay the right and let's get the forecast weather the temperature or the ampersand good okay now what else let's also we're going to inspect that particular element remove that yeah so we're going to inspect the hour we're saying that we're removing the margin the hour forecast item temperature we're going to remove the margin as well i want to set up the value of the temperature the color to a light gray if you see see maybe it's a little bit too light let's use that value okay and we're gonna set it in hour the margin is gonna be the same or similar to the hour for the temperature so we're gonna say that the margin is gonna be equivalent equivalent to zero for both good now i think that the clouds the description as well i would like it zero at the moment okay also i would like to get some padding for the whole forecast is that a padding of 10 pixels maybe 15 let's add just 10 okay the forecast i don't like its position i would like to set it to text align to left okay forecast the title left line also the padding for our forecast it's gonna be 15 pixels or 10 pixels okay now the other thing that i don't like is the fact that this is overflowing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our items yep our items and that's gonna contain multiple items and we're gonna do an overflow y of scroll right an overflow of x is not gonna have actually is the overflow x scroll and the overflow y we're not gonna set that okay for our forecast items okay we got that and let me see what else i would like to add a little bit of padding as well in for each of the items let's select one of the items padding say seven pixels yeah that looks about okay maybe 10 10 pixels i like that better 
okay for each one of the items good and also i would like to add a border so i can differentiate more as well let's try that border on the right side of each of the items and that's gonna be one pixel solid and the color i'm not a fan of that black something lighter and it looks all right but i still not liking it let's get the same color that we have in the text okay got that padding i also want to add a margin at the bottom let's say five pixels that's 10 i like it better 10. we're gonna hmm, change this back to a lighter color let's stick it with the ccc hex number add those values okay so one of the things that happening here is that our last element also has a border on the right and we don't like that so we're gonna use we're gonna define that using uh, the last of type so essentially what's gonna say is the last item we want to remove the border right and we're gonna set it to zero zero pixels we we'll do that we save it and that border is removed that's better third thing that i miss is to add the border to the whole forecast this is looking square looking i don't like that so let's add the same border that we added for our current weather i think it was seven pixels that's save let's see something is wrong ah it's border radius okay and then we're gonna also have a margin at the top so we can separate these values there it is it's looking better good now let me see there's some extra padding in there for the margin or for the title okay i would like the margin of the top we probably just 15 pixels a little bit less than that eight margin from the bottom i think the margin of the bottom should be about the same yeah that's a little bit better that's for the title okay got that and also we could even style this the scroll bar and for that one i always forget about it so i'm just gonna quickly search for it um, css scroll bar styling uh, let me see Doo -doo -doo. okay yeah we're gonna use the web kit okay so we're just going to quickly paste this inside our items okay and we're gonna add the ampersand sign we're gonna save and we're gonna see this change of course we can modify the color if you would like for example we can set this to red although not the best and you see that it's changed to red the color i'm actually going to change it to the same color of the default the main background that we have okay there it is it's a little bit better i could also make it rounded as well let me select this border radius by pixels uh, 
and I think you'll have to add that on here for the forecast scroll thumb element so I'm gonna select radius 5 pixels and that got modified the track with also set a radius order radius of 5 pixels there it is it's rounded and it's looking much better so we're gonna add these values in here for the track and for the thumb and we said that the borders radius was this good we save and we refresh so little things that i might want to change this is a little bit big in my personal preference and then this button i'm not seeing the the left side Let me see. Oh, okay, because in our styles I had copy from the input. And I had the input has a border left of zero, and we don't want that for our button. So we're gonna change that for our search bar that CS or SAS file. And I think it's still a little bit too big. I want to change it to the input to be 25. Okay, that's better. okay and there you are we got our weather application working that's awesome let's start playing with different locations oh i didn't like that that's something that we'll need to fix it but so far it's okay that's sufficient at the moment there will be bugs here and there but here you are just for you your weather application built on react Let's just start playing with different cities. New York, Boston, 29 degrees, kind of cold down there. Let's see, Mexico City, or oh, Ciudad de Mexico. Uh, what else? Panama City. Huh, Whew. that was a long video, guys. Hopefully you got to learn how to build this weather application in React. It's a fairly simple application. If you are fairly new with React, uh, it would be good for you to just get in the process of getting used to how things work, how you could just learn the basic concepts, such as how to create components or how to communicate uh, between components and also how can we make the requests uh, to an api to get fetch data as well if you like what you saw please give it a thumbs up because that actually helps a little bit it tells me that you actually watch this video or where this video was helpful for you if not please leave me a comment in the section below i would like to hear from you what can we do to help you to learn programming to learn the front end at least with react and hopefully makes you a better programmer in the future. Remember, it's a process. It's gonna be hard at the beginning. It's just not easy to grab some of these concepts. It's gonna be easy for some people, not for other people. Just take it easy, don't be hard on yourself. That was all for today and see you until the next time or ciao, ciao.